Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to see all these smiling and wonderful spirits here in the room, gathered on this beautiful sunny day. Boy, it seems like it's spring. <laughs> but I you know we've got a couple more months where the weather can be nice and cold and rainy, hopefully. Today's um, talk is going to revolve around the topic of sp spiritual camaraderie and conscious association. Conscious association is one of the eight paths in the Sunders um, teaching. And Yogananda, um, Paramahansa Yogananda, wrote this quote many years ago. He said, the greatest influence in your life, stronger than even your willpower, is your environment. When trying to change for the better, spiritual company is essential. When I, many years ago, when I found out about Sunburst and, and came to the spiritual community, I, re I was reading Autobiography, Autobiography of Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda. And the book is, is in essence, is about his spiritual journey to find his spiritual community. And during that time in India, the, the devout seekers were looking for or unguided to their spiritual teacher who would give them the knowledge and the, and the, and the tools to, to have a, a unified experience of spirit, a deep awakening. So around Sri Yudhiswar, who was Yogananda's teacher, a great many people were coming into his ashram 30, 40, 50, gathering around in a spiritual community to help evolve each soul. And then many years later, Norm had the great fortune of being at Mount Washington with Yogananda, who came to this country in 1920. Just before coming to um, Boston uh, on, the, on the steamboat from, from India, which took some months, he had started a, uh, a school, a how to live school for young children in India, <clears throat> where they would be, give, be given a well-rounded education and taught yoga some form of uh, meditation and stillness in addition to the regular uh, academic subjects. When Yogananda, just before Yogananda came to America, he had no idea that he was going to be coming to America. He was sitting in his, his little room there in the, uh, at, the, at the school and all of a sudden he found himself looking at all these faces that were strange. They were. It was like another another land. And when he talked about that to his guru, Sri Yudhiswar, Yudhiswar said that he he was going to take the wisdom of the teachings and the uh, realization that he had received to America. So Yogananda. <clears throat> got off the boat in Boston and he was a he was a um, wore a long robe and long black hair and he was a pretty much stood out <laughs> from the people that were <laughs> from the, the industrial um, in the 1920s everything was called the roaring 20s you know everyone was running around trying to make money and, and enterprise and everything was going and uh, 
he he was the first to stay in the in the in the West and brought the uh, wonderful teachings of the Kriya to the West, and he stayed here for 30 years until his passing in 1952. And I want to just emphasize that these great spiritual beings, these people that that have really wanted to search for God and that 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 spark within themselves were guided by the divine to set up spiritual communities, to set up spiritual centers where people could come together and 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 evolve themselves at a maybe a pace that would be a lot faster than if they were living by themselves. Norm received uh, Kriya from from uh, Yogananda uh, in, uh, I think it was probably 1947 when he came, and uh, Norm was sitting in his, he had this uh, um, room in this old cable car house, which Yogananda had him fix up, because in the 19, uh, at the turn of the, cent- 19, uh, turn of the century, um, Mount Washington was a, was a hotel, and there was a, it was sitting on a hill, and there was a cable car that went up to the top, and there was like a house at the top where the mechanic would live or something. And Norm fixed it up uh, with some other brothers. Norm was sitting sitting in there one afternoon, and he had this inner experience where he um, was taken up into this. It was like a he called it like a ship of light. Uh, 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 a ship of light, and around him were beings that were very familiar to him, and they had portholes all around it. And as the ship was moving north, he looked out one of the windows, and he looked down, and he saw these these young people in front of this ranch house in the Los Padres National Forest, and they they were looking up and smiling and waving at him. And then he, and then all of a sudden. Like that, he was back in the cable car house. This was 1948, and uh, <clears throat> so he had glimmerings of the future. You know that would that of sunburst o- over 20, 20 years before sunburst would even be existing. He saw people gathering together in a spiritual community. The amazing thing, he recognized those faces when when Sunburst started. He recognized that those were the same faces he saw on that ship so many years before. So that their spirits had come in, just were incarnating during that time when he was at Mount Washington. Yogananda said something really interesting that I was reading. It was about it goes the one in the many is endeavoring to unite the many and make them one. And as I reflected on that, I realized that the whole movement of establishing thrust of establishing spiritual communities is this desire for that pure light, that light within us and our soul to unite with other lights and other souls in these communities, in these clusters of light. And there's an expression, as above, so below. So people, if you've had, I had an experience of the light, and I realized that that light had consciousness, the inner light had consciousness and intelligence, and it was made up of individuals, but they were all one. So the one and the many had made them all one. And it was like a I realized that what we're doing on the earth is a is a is a uh, is an enactment of what happens in the inner spaces, and what spirit, divine spirit, wants for this planet, and for all of all the creation around us. But Norm had to he had to uh, travel in the world for 20 years as a mason and bricklayer, and he was so enthusiastic of talking talking about spirit 
and people couldn't really relate to it in the 1950s, um, being a yogi and some of his experiences. He did um, happen to go to, into the desert because he was working in the in the uh, masonry trade, and he met um, uh, George Van Tassel, one of his fellow disciples at uh, Yogananda's Daniel Boone. Um, they had all these adventures and went into the desert and. They met George, and, and he had three daughters. Um, George was interested in uh, UFOs and in alternative technologies, and it was a way of, and on Saturday, he had hundreds of people coming out there to Giant Rock in this whole big gathering to see and witness other beings from other dimensions or something out of the ordinary because even in the 50s, people were thirsting for some type of spirituality, and the spirituality uh, a lot of times revolved around um, um, the UFO phenomenon. And Norm was able to, because of his experience with Yogananda, he was able to connect the UFO phenomenon with his inner experiences and share um, and give that message out to his to the fellows that were in the in that area um, during those those meetings, um, I was about during that time. I was my dad had a old uh, a, a cabin out in Twenty Nine Palms, and Norm may have built it. I don't know. I was only about three or four years old, but I remember playing in the sand outside and kind of looking out into the desert and. Uh, uh, unbeknownst to me, Norm was, you know, a giant rock, and and uh, but we never crossed paths because at that time I was just too young. <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> so m many years went by, and uh, I was in. Um, I was going to school at the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana, and. Uh, I uh, ended up dropping out, and my roommate, he had some friends in Alaska, and we ended up trying to hitchhike to Alaska. You know, during the early 70s, late 60s, it was really easy to hitchhike. You know, you could just get on the side of the road, and someone would pick you up. And, um, but we ended up getting turned around. But in Minneapolis, I I bought this autobiography of Yogi, this book. And I spent all my evenings before I went to bed reading that book. I just had a pup tent, a little pup tent that I was sleeping in. And um, these fellows that uh, were driving a VW bus, they uh, gave me a ride up to uh, uh, Rocky Mountain National Park. And, and uh, they uh, had me take care of their dog, which is a big, big German Shepherd dog. And he kept me cozy during the, the early April snowstorms that we had up there, and I spent about a week there, and I had this desire in my heart that I had to find some place where I could ex express my love for spirit that was kindled by reading Autobiography of Yogi. I felt this beautiful, um, magical excitement that that um, I was on a I was on a journey, a discovery, and and uh, I ended up basically I ended up back in L.A. and then my father, and my mother, uh, I just couldn't stay there, so I hitchhiked to Santa Barbara, and uh, anyway I felt I needed to find some work, and I went. In, I remember going into this restaurant <coughs> or near this restaurant area, and. Uh, I was walking around, and I, all of a sudden I felt a hand on my shoulder turn me around, and there was nobody there. And as I turned around, I saw this this sign that said um, um, Whole Foods Restaurant or something. And I went in there, and that's where I found out, uh, out about Sunburst. So that was a, um, I think, the autobiography of Yogi, and there was this unseen force that was driving people to Sunburst. 
And when I got to Sunburst, it was like, my first day was like, um, remember that movie, Close Encounters, where all those people had, had different visions of this mountain or something, and they ended up gathering, they went to this remote place in Wyoming, you know, and they were, they were all herded up into this van, and uh, they were looking at each other like they were, you know, something zapped them, you know. <laughs> and that's what I felt. I looked around the room and all these brothers and sisters, and I felt these were really my, my true friends. And I didn't know anybody, but I felt, I knew, I think our, our spirits, I felt like spirit was trying to make the many one. So that's, in, Yogananda had that, hit the nail on the head when he said the one was trying to make the many one. You know, it was like, um, that's desire for spirit is to gather people together in spiritual communities. And as we sit here today, we're, we're, we're a spiritual community and we're um, spending this, this wondrous, wondrous light together. Um, so I'd like to um, go into our meditating uh, uh, time and uh, <clears throat> if everyone can kind of find a comfortable seat and sit up straight and try to keep your knees um, below your hips if you're sitting on a chair or And just breathe in, focus on breathing in and breathing out. And then if you have a, you can just visualize a point of focus between the two eyebrows down from the crown of the head and inward from the temples and just, just sit there with your consciousness and then gently close your eyelids or you can close your eyes full and just breathe. And as, as we're practicing this, Patty is going to lead us in the bowls and bring the sound within us.
Open up 